<laughs> gained popularity in the mid 80s when her ex boyfriend Prince made her lead singer of a secular group called Vanity Six. And after 15 years of drugs, illicit sex, and life in the fast lane, she has given her life to the <coughs> She's happy with it. And today, my guest today is Denise Matthews. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you very Praise much. The Lord. I'm so glad that you could be here. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank and you have a lovely voice, too. Well, i got to commend you on your voice. It's really you so very much. beautiful. What made you um, give up the life of all the popularity, all the fame? Oh, as a matter of fact, recently and I just uh, gave up more than that. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus. I gave up my acting career. Just to come and preach for the Lord, hallelujah. Just to come and preach for the Lord. But what, gave me, what made me give up, the, you know, the first, uh, the, the first, you know, my first uh, coming in um, to Christ was the fact that I was introduced to the demons in my house. I was living with them for five years. They were, they were attacking me and attacking my home mm -hmm. and attacking the people in my house. And I was doing some psychic work and I was doing all the, all the evil stuff thinking that I was actually um, praising the Lord, you know, and, and, and thinking I was actually working for God. And, and, and that particular um, notion has a many, many, many people fooled today. You were blind. Totally. Well, you were on drugs. Do you think that that was a... No, to, uh, the kind of drugs I did it wasn't a hallucinogenic drug. It was cocaine. It, it had nothing to do with hallucinogenics, okay? And that doesn't make you bring on demons, no. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> demons, <laughs> demons are very real. Yeah. And they were there even when I wasn't on drugs. They were there. And they were there for my friends. So, you know, not that I have to prove all that because I'm sure that the devil approves himself yes, just by the evil Absolutely. in the world. Um, but anyways, that brought me to Christ and, 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 that, and, G and uh, it, it brought me to the fact that I was begging Jesus on my hands and on my knees, crying and pounding and, you know, the floor and, 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 and wanting to kill myself daily. Mm -hmm. I was more messed up with that than I was the drugs. Okay. If that makes any sense to you. Okay. I mean, that was killing me more, mm -hmm. of course. That, mm -hmm. bring, that was that, that whole how sensation was your, of hell. Your child life, you were raised, it was a very raised abusive by your life. father yeah. and your stepmother. Right. It was a very um, abusive childhood mm -hmm. that, that I went through. Mm -hmm. But nothing that I haven't forgiven. You know, coming to the Lord, it doesn't matter what happened out there. It doesn't even matter what you did. Because mm -hmm. Jesus can teach you how to forgive. And you can't forgive. It's impossible to forgive anybody without Jesus. And here's what I do when I preach to someone. I say, uh -huh. okay, here's an example. Here we go. Yes. Here is Joe. And Joe goes up to his wife and he probably punches his wife in the face. Mm -hmm. And his wife starts crying, oh, Joe, why'd you do that? And she turns around and, say, and she says, Joe, why'd you do that? And Joe says, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. And she's like, okay, honey, I forgive you. And Joe says, oh, Lord, I don't know why I did that, right? But he don't know which Lord he's talking to because he's not with God, and neither is this little Betty Sue. So Betty Sue's sitting there, and she says, Joe, I love you. Please don't hit me again. Joe says, I won't. And she says, I forgive you. I forgive you. And the next day, Joe goes up to his wife, and his wife says, I love you, honey, but why'd you hit me? <laughs> and for the next 15, 15 years later, Joe? You hit me. Uh -huh. You know, it's called we cannot forgive. It's an impossibility to forgive without without Jesus Christ. And when I came to the Lord, I forgave my father for abusing. Then I abused other people. What type of abuse did your father do to you? It just, it Anything? doesn't really matter. Beatings, you know what I'm saying? And do you like, think that that abuse... If, you get, if kids get mental abuse or they get physical abuse, it's all the same kind of abuse. Yes, it is. So you get it on your back and on your butt and on all parts of your, your thing and, and, and your physical and mental. The same with somebody. Either way, they lose God. Absolutely. Either way, they're driven away to, to, to move into another area that is just a Satan. Mm -hmm. So either way, it's abuse. Absolutely. You know? But God, God can't come to the rescue of that, and God can show you how to forgive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, He can show yeah. you. So you found that forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Yes, because it's important. You know, I think that a lot of Christians are missing that today. Mm -hmm. And I, I go and I speak on just on that issue, too, on people forgiving. And one key to, uh, to forgiving all of that, of any, any, anybody's pain that they put you through or any pain that you put somebody through, once you ask them for forgiveness, you ask God for forgiveness, it is forgiven by God. Absolutely. Now, if that person chooses not to forgive you, well, then they're just going to have to find that through God. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. why do we forgive? One major fact that we forgive is because when you come to Jesus Christ, He forgives every single solitary thing that you've ever done 
in this world to hurt anybody. And that's why he died on the cross. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of Christ. Absolutely. Because, and when I said to Jesus, Jesus, how do I forgive? How am I supposed to forgive my father after what he did to me? I still can't. He's burning in hell right now. And Jesus says, have I not forgiven you for everything? And you have led many people to hell, Denise. Okay. And many people astray. Okay. And so, okay. praise the Lord. Oh, right. Praise Jesus. Now, listen, did you know your mother while you were growing up? My mother became very sick because she flew about 15 feet out of a windshield. Okay. And uh, it led her to, you know, not being right in her mind, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Led her to not being right in her mind, so mm -hmm. that was How sad. Did that? How did that affect you? I mean, what made you... How did it affect me? Well, I never had my mother around. As a matter of fact, when I was a child, my mother was always busy getting beaten up, and I'd be jumping on her back and running to her, Mom, 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 I'll save you, and all this, you know, and then they'd throw me across the room, but... Mm -hmm. You know, many children go through that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not the only kid that goes through that. But Absolutely. 75, maybe 80% of all the children in America Absolutely. and the world, across the world, go through this stuff daily. Absolutely. But you know, Jesus had an early plan for me. Yes. Before thou was formed in the belly, I knew thee. Yes. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And I said, and I have said this, and I said, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm just a child. I've been a year with the Lord. And the Lord says, Say not that I'm a child, for thou shalt go to whomever I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Amen. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Amen. It's like he's touching yours. Mm -hmm. Behold, I put my words in my mouth. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I was five years old, I started preaching then. I used to walk into the rooms of my sister's bedrooms, open up the, the Bible and say, Did you know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and his begotten son is him? And thank you, Jesus, because if, if you don't believe Jesus is God, Mm -hmm. Well, then why are you bowing down to him? That's all I got to say. Why are you even getting down your hands and knees and bowing down to him if he's not God? Yes. He is the Father, he is the Son, and he is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he always will be. Whether you choose to believe it or not, yes. well, you need to cry out to God. Because this information, I had to cry out for four hours, beg, plead, plead until I did everything but bleed to find out this information, who Jesus really was. Because yes. if he's not God, then why bow down to him at all? Absolutely. So because he saved my life, he is God. Thank you, Jesus. Because nobody could have God taken me out of that you. torture. Hallelujah. Hey, look here. Jesus, look here. When you, um, when you were out in the world, yes. you know, you were, um, you had the fame. You right. You a princess, girlfriend, and right. things of that nature. How did you feel inside? I, mean, I, always, I always ached inside. There was always everything. Something was always missing. missing. When you're without Jesus, something is always missing. Okay. I have Jesus today. That's all I need. Absolutely. And, and, and to feel whole. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've never been reborn and you're watching the show, let me tell you one thing. Yes. The, the, the one great thing that you will get when you get reborn, when you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's the most important. Not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That scripture doesn't exist in the Greek testimony, but those who seek God will find that information out if you really truly seek God. Mm -hmm. Anyways, when you come to Jesus, the first thing that happened to me that I felt was that black hole that was inside my stomach in the pit. That It's like you could stick the, the whole hand inside that hole and just, it was just black inside. It was empty. There was something empty inside and I couldn't figure out what it was. But nothing seemed to sit right. When I came to Jesus, that hole was filled up. Thank and that's what people need to know. You know why? Because people are standing with those holes in their stomach everywhere across America and across the world and across the nation. And but they can identify the with that. But all the money, money didn't do nothing. Uh, uh, money, I used to, this is my prayers. I used to beg, Jesus Christ, please, please take everything away from me. Take all the clothes, all the money, all the stuff, everything. Get them out of my house. Get the people. Just give me you. Oh, just help me find myself, Jesus. That was my prayer for five years. All the years I prayed that. Because a lot of people feel like that their money, their riches, no. and what they uh, possess. But Jesus teaches that in the Bible. People think that, but what the Bible, everything that you need to know is in this Word. Yes, it is. Everything that I thought I had to know was in my head. Before I came to Jesus, then we started opening up this Bible. Oh my God, was I wrong about that? Holy Toledo, you know? Everything that we think is, is that is right in the world is absolutely wrong to God. Most yes, of the stuff is just, absolutely. it's like God didn't say that. 
He said to love your enemy. We didn't love your enemy, God. Whoa, what does that mean? Yes. Pray for your enemies. For Whoa, them. Lord. That's like head. That was heavy. Absolutely. That was heavy. And if you would have told me that when I was in the world, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm interested in reaching people yes. that don't have Jesus. Mm -hmm. I witness day and night from the time I get up in the morning to the time I was supposed to. I even get stopped by the cops on the street. You know, yeah. sometimes they I get in trouble. <laughs> I have uh -huh. little things I must work on, right? Like driving fast. Anyways, I'll get stopped by the policeman. That pulled me over. I started witnessing to him. I actually had a cop say to me once, no, don't witness him. Don't talk to him. Don't preach to him. Preach to me. I want to hear. Yeah. I said, thank you, Jesus. There was definitely a reason I got stopped. Absolutely. Do you know what so I'm saying? You've been witnessing to just about everybody that you... There anybody. Well, you've seen me all day. What have I done? You've been witnessing every day. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all day long. All since, day. Since the airport. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, to anybody. Been, so it's just been coming out. I'm on fire for Jesus. I can tell. I'm on too fire. God. I love it. I so, don't stop. So how is God using you in Hollywood? In Hollywood? As, for, as to reach you know, uh, some of the uh, secular stars there. Well, you know, I, I, like I say, I preach to everybody that there is. I preach to everybody that there is. I, I got to pay attention to this little red light. Thank you, Jesus. I, I preach to everybody. Absolutely everybody so if I'm on the set and now I quit acting because the Lord led me out to because he said he said the same thing to me he said to Peter Denise do you love me I said yes Jesus I love you Denise do you love me I said yes Jesus I love you he said Denise do you love me I said Jesus you know I love you yes. he said then feed my lambs yes. he said Denise what other job did the disciples have when they were working for me I said eh. You got a point there, God. <laughs> they weren't doing nothing but excuse, they weren't doing nothing but preaching for you. Yes. That's all they did. Peter was off fishing. Mm -hmm. When Peter was sitting there fishing, he said, Peter, you love me. Yeah, I love you, Jesus. Yeah, let me fish. <laughs> Peter, hello. You love me. Yes. It's like then feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Feed my lambs. Not feed the fish, the worms. Feed my lambs. They're out there. Their souls need to uh Come to me. Mm -hmm. So Jesus knows what he's talking about. And all those people sit down and say, oh, Vanity, don't you want to be more famous? And it's like, hello? I'm not here to be famous. Yeah. I'm here to make Jesus famous, more famous. We all know that Jesus is the most famous that you can be. Absolutely. I'm here to make him famous inside the people that don't know him. Absolutely. Okay? That's what I'm here for. That's so my intention. God, that there was a call on your life. When I was a child. When was a child. When I was a child, to tell you the honest truth, I, I was always in my Bible. That was my life, because I would get beat or I get tortured and stuff like that, and I go right back to my Bible. I'd go back up to my room, and I would cry, and I would read my open my Bible. And Jesus, so Satan saw this, of course, and he saw this little girl always in her Bible, so he was out to kill this little girl. Yeah. And the more I opened my Bible, and Jesus would always say, I said, Jesus, he would tell me who he was, and he would always say this, that he was God. Mm -hmm. So I kept that word. Okay. He is God. You ask any child, try it. You ask any child, go to a child, tell them to pray to Jesus and ask Jesus mm -hmm. who he is. Mm -hmm. And every child that I've ever tried it with, hallelujah, the <laughs> child goes, he said he is God. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. Because the children, they're here. Yeah. We get adults, we stop hearing because we don't want to hear anything but what we are truths. Right. You know, and it's not about our truth. It's not about my truth. It's about the Lord's truth. It's yes. about the word. Yes. God gave us enough clues to tell us who he was, that his name was Jesus. If he's not Jesus, then why are we bowing down to him? Absolutely. And you know something? And this is what you're preaching to the people. This is what I'm preaching to the people. I'm preaching exactly what the apostles preached. Absolutely. The people just don't have enough faith that, that, that God can be the Father before he's the Son. But the, the, the testament, thou believest, James 2.19, thou believest there is one true God, thou doest well. The devils also believe this and tremble. Even the devil knows it. And so he, well, what does he want to do? He wants to come in and deceive us. He deceives the cat to see the Catholics during 325 A.D. Constantine, when he run the war, got five men together and they decided what Jesus Christ was going to say about baptism and they rewrote it in the Bible. They just brought it in and they slew off your head and God was not about slewing off your head if you didn't get baptized. That's not what God was. But Constantine, they, they cut your neck off yeah. and they were part of the Catholic religion. They cut your neck off if you did not get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And they rewrote the Bible and said that Jesus Christ said that and guess what? Mm -hmm. But how many men have sought God? Yeah. How many men have sought God and said, God, why would you say this? Why, Jesus, why would you say that? Mm -hmm. And the disciples say that. Okay. Let me ask you. Lies. 
What church are you going to now? And I teach. I'm just a, I'm actually teaching, but I go to Apostolica. They call me Apostolica. I don't even like to be called a name. Okay. Well, you know, because this is, I'm just about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Jesus told me to follow him. He was the truth, the way, and the life. Okay. Now uh, I'm following him. So Apostolic is, is people that believe that Jesus is God and know and have revelation knowledge. No. Meaning, I love Jesus with all my heart. Everything that's in me, there's not one little bit of me that doesn't love God. Because I love Him so much, I'm going to seek Him. And because he, I love Him so much, I'm going to stand up boldly and speak His name. Absolutely. Because I love Him so much. Now, if you love Him that much, you're going to seek Him and you're going to find out who He is. Because there's mystery in that. The revelation, I got revelation knowledge. You want to hear about it? Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. It's right in the Word. Here. We got a couple more minutes. Um, tell us a little bit about what your, some of your future goals. The future goals? Yeah, some of your future goals. Uh, just preaching. You know, but Jesus told me when I first came to the Lord, it was funny because when I first came to the Lord, a uh, preacher came out to me, walked out to me and took me by the hand and, and he was in the middle of a sermon. He walked into the aisle and he, he led me up. He stood me and he said, the Lord is telling me you are going to bring millions to Him. Yes. These are the same people I'm trying to bring them to Jesus. These are the same preachers that I'm trying to bring them to Jesus, but they don't want to hear who Jesus is. See, people stop at a certain point. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to man and they say, man, who is God? Mm -hmm. Instead of going to God, who are you? When I sat down and I said, Jesus, who are you? Did people think that Jesus wasn't going to tell me if I'm sitting there and I'm crying? If you're crying, I'm begging on your hands and your knees and you want to know who Jesus is. Yes. He's will, gonna tell. No, he will definitely let you know. But if you, but what is all this? He, he talked to Moses, didn't he? Why wouldn't he tell me who he is? Absolutely. Why wouldn't he take me? And where did he take me? Right into the scriptures. Absolutely. Okay. That's right into Isaiah. He took me right. Excuse me. He took me right into Isaiah. Isaiah. That's it. The Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer. I am the Lord of hosts. I am the first the last and beside me there is no God now this is the most people tell ye bring them near let them take counsel together who has declared this from ancient time who have told it from that time have not I the Lord and there is no God else beside me a just God and a savior there is none no else no God beside me so a God saying that he's the savior oh well look at that isn't that incredible now when I had prayed that's right when I got down on my hands and knees and begged to Jesus and said Jesus tell me who you are Yes. This is the he exact did, scripture that he took me to right there. And I didn't know that scripture before that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He took me right there. He said, turn to Isaiah, Denise. He said, change. that's who I am. I said, oh, I knew you were God. I knew it. Otherwise, why would I be bowing down to you? Oh, yes. thank you, Jesus. I knew it. And then he said, now follow me. Mm -hmm. Follow me because many men will persecute you just because you tell them the truth. But you follow me, Denise, because all else be a liar. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you were here. We're going to... Right now, what we're going to do is that we're going to touch and agree for anybody you, out there who would love, who would like the Lord to come into your heart. Thank you you have heard her testimony. Thank there you, is Jesus. nothing too hard for God. All things Thank are possible Jesus. through Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. But you have to believe on, upon the Lord Thank you, and Jesus. the Savior. Hallelujah. Right now, I want you to just stop and pray Thank where you Jesus. are. And if you've been searching for the Lord Most in your heart, heart and you are looking, and if there's something empty inside of you, don't know what it is, material things cannot fix. Fix it. The cars can't fix it. Your business can't fix it. No matter, the more you gain, the more empty you feel inside. And if you want that void to be filled, we're going to pray right now. Stop where you are and just repeat after me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart now. Make me whole. Cleanse me with your blood. And I accept you into my heart, oh God. In Jesus' name. And if you I pray that prayer, then you know that you are saved. Your name on your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Jesus has saved you today. Go to church, read your Bible, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And get baptized in the name of Jesus. Baptized in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. And right now I want to make a few announcements. The Women of Victory.